Hey guys, welcome back to another DJI Avata 2 video here. Now this week's gonna be a fun one because we're covering the three different flight modes available on the DJI Avata 2, normal, sport, and my favorite, manual mode. And we're also gonna do some speed runs as well. It also got me thinking, and I keep asking myself this question, but I will save that towards the end of the video and see if you have the same question or if you agree or disagree. If you're new, hello, my name is Demetrius and I create videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And it's a mix of entertaining and educational content. Subscribe to stay up to date. Now, let's jump into the speed runs first. <laughs> So the first thing to note here, I found an opportunity during the week to fly it and we did have, what was it, 12, 12 mile an hour winds, 18.6 mile an hour gusts. Not the end of the world, it's perfectly fine, even for a mini drone, this, this wasn't anything to worry about. I used the app UAV forecast to tell me if it's suitable to fly or not. So we're all good there, but take that into account when you're flying one direction versus on the way back. Now, I'm not Matt Watson from Carwell and I don't have someone to race another Avata 2 with. That would have been really fun. Maybe in the future, if I can, I know someone who has one, but we haven't actually met yet to do stuff with the Avata 2, flying this against other drones just to test out the speed. But I digress, let's continue. Now to test these speed runs, all I did was I went up into the air and I flew in two directions, one with a tailwind and one against the wind. Now with the tailwind in normal mode, I was hitting 18.1 miles per hour. And against the wind, it was 17.4 miles an hour. But as soon as I started banking left slightly, just to straighten my route, it went to 18 miles an hour. However, it's pretty consistent. In sport mode, we're doubling the speed essentially. So with the tailwind, I hit 38.9 miles per hour. And against the wind, I got 33.6. Again, when you're banking or moving, it's pretty consistent. So nothing to worry about, but it's double the speed in sport mode. And then when you are using the motion controller here, as soon as you let go of the trigger, the drone is pretty quick to come to a halt and just hover compared to the remote controller, the RC3 here, where if you are in manual mode, you have to physically stop unless you hit the pause button, but we'll come to that in a moment. Now in manual mode, I did do a speed run as well, the same thing with a tailwind and against, and I managed to hit 64.1 miles an hour, and then against the wind, 50.9 miles an hour. So it's a lot faster. And in order to slow down, you have to pitch back and then apply throttle as well to slow as fast as possible. But this is in the more advanced stages when you do start flying manual mode. However, do note that if you are based in Europe, this is actually capped at 19 meters per second, which I think is 42.5 miles an hour. And that does suck because we know the potential of the drone, but I guess DJI have done this in order to meet the regulations for this to be labeled a C1 drone so you can use your basic license. So it's it sucks, but it's also a win at the same time because you can fly in Europe in, with a basic license. Now we've got rid of the speed runs our way, let's cover the actual different flight modes and how useful they are in each one. In this mode, using the motion controller, it's actually a very good cruiser and it's very smooth flying and it's very safe around people. As you can see in the video here, I was flying at a local park, not doing anything crazy. When I'm doing my low ground flying and then when I'm up in the air, obviously I'm just cruising and it feels a lot slower when you're higher up compared to when you're lower down. That is just perspective. Also notice that when you are flying low to the ground, you notice that the downward setting pops up telling you how close to the ground you are. And obviously DJI is keeping you at a stable flight. So it is taking into account the elevation changes. So you're not gonna smash into the ground. Note that this does not work in low light situations and I have tested this out in my apartment. However, we can cover this in a future video as well when we do some more indoor stuff. As I'm guessing many of you want to use this for like real estate stuff and I have used this for not for real estate but I did it for a barber shop but I'll we'll cover that in a future video. Now just note that the stock settings for vertical and lateral speeds are pretty slow. So if you want to climb faster, you need to go into the goggles and adjust the settings for both normal and sport mode. Now my advice here is don't go crazy and put it to the max setting. Just do it in increments until you find a speed that you're more comfortable with in terms of climbing faster 
and going lateral. When I say going lateral, the drone is literally going side to side, not forward, that is lateral speed. And this actually allowed me to perform an orbit around myself using the motion controller and the little joystick here by just holding it left or right, depending which direction you go. And it's actually really straightforward. So the week before I did it with head tracking, now I'm able to achieve this and I've proven it with the motion controller, you can orbit, you just have to adjust the lateral speeds. Note that the lateral forward or backward speed cap at 17 miles per hour and the vertical speed caps at 13.4 miles per hour. Now let's jump in to sport mode. <laughs> Sport mode is essentially twice the speed of normal. So the movements are definitely more erratic when using the motion controller here. So you just have to provide a smoother input with the motion controller to have smoother flying because it's so quick. You're gonna notice a lot more jerky movements. Notice that when you do jump into the settings for the motion controller, for both normal and sport mode, they are capped at different thresholds. You have a higher threshold in sport mode than you do in normal mode, and that does make sense. So notice here that the lateral speed is capped at 17.9 miles per hour, the same as normal mode. The vertical speed now has a higher threshold at 20.1 miles per hour, and then the forward and backward is capped at 35.8. So if you wanna ever reset these, just hit the reset button, and then you're back to stock, and then you can fix your settings again. Now let's jump into manual mode, which is my favorite mode, because that is true FPV, not with the motion controller. If you're a true FPV pilot, you're gonna be flying with the RC3 here. Now I did make a video, I think previous video, covering on how to get to manual mode. You have to set that properly, but as a quick recap, you have to take off this back cover here in order to loosen the springs so the joystick is not spring loaded in the middle. You also have to set this custom button, where is it? You have to set this custom button as well into manual mode, not sport mode. And if you wanna have the full flight experience in order to do flips and rolls, you have to toggle off M mode altitude limit. But if you're new to FPV and you've never flown manual before, don't touch that yet. And then probably don't go into manual yet. Make sure you get enough simulator time before you jump into manual mode and then destroy your drone. Now in terms of adjusting the speed with manual mode, it isn't as straightforward with the motion controller where you're picking the speed threshold. So for, for the purpose of this video and to keep it simple, you need to adjust your gain and expo settings for the controller. So this is the center sensitivity, the max rate and the expo. So as I'm still familiarizing myself with the Avada 2, I have left these as stock, I have not touched these and I'm pretty happy with them so far. However, in short, adjusting these settings determines how fast the drone will rotate around its axis. So if, you, if we put in 360 under max rate, that essentially means that if we push the stick all the way to the left or right, and it will set at 360. One stick rotation essentially means the drone will rotate 360 degrees. Now, the higher that number, the faster the drone will rotate at max stick, at max stick deflection. And the lower the number, the slower the drone will rotate at max stick deflection. And that goes for any axis, whether it's this way, this way, so any axis in that center point is how quick or slow, how fast or slow the drone will rotate around its axis. Now Joshua Bardwell has a good video explaining this and it's highly recommended if you are serious about FPV to not only watch but subscribe to his channel. Now if you're new and trying out manual mode, just stick with the stock and you'll be fine, but make sure you put in enough simulator time as I mentioned earlier before you jump into manual mode. Now the best part about manual mode, especially when you have M mode out toggled off, is you have complete freedom to do what you want with the drone. You could do split S's, you could do power loops, and it's just amazing. And you can see in the video, and maybe you saw my reel that I launched on Sunday, that I was able to tower dive with ease, and that's something you cannot do with the motion controller, but you just do not have that freedom to dive vertically down. And the other thing is, if you do get in a pickle and you're worried that the drone isn't gonna make it, again, on the remote controller here, you have this pause button, get used to having your finger there. So the minute you hit that, regardless whatever direction or orientation the drone is, the drone will self-right and hover. 
regardless of what position these sticks, this stick is. So if the throttle is left up, the drone ain't going anywhere. If the stick is down, the drone ain't going anywhere. The drone will literally stay in normal mode and hover until you regain control of your whereabouts, wherever it is. So if you haven't flown before and you think you're gonna get in trouble, push, push this. This, this is the save button. Save where you are. You know when you're in the middle of a game and you hit pause? That's that. Make sure you hit that button. The other thing is if you are new and you're flying in manual mode, make sure you fly in an open space with no people. There are plenty of places that you can fly. If it means a small bike ride or a car trip, I highly recommend this, especially if you're new. Unlike myself, where I'm familiar with flying drones, so as you can see on the wall, like the Mark V here, like this drone, this is the Gepard C Mark V, I'm very familiar with flying this quad, and there is no safety aids on this one, so if something goes wrong, this drone's going down. Now let's jump into my final thoughts. Now normal mode is a great cruise mode. If you just want to go and cruise, have a nice flight, be low to the ground, be near people, it's fantastic. It's not a full FPV experience, but in terms of just enjoying the flight, having a nice well, Sunday drive, you know, when you just pop into your car, you want to go for a quick drive, nothing too crazy. That's what normal mode is. It's really nice. It's a comfortable speed. Stock settings are really good. Like they're comfortable. The only thing I would actually adjust is maybe the lateral and vertical speed so you can climb a lot faster to maybe get over a tree and then be able to orbit around yourself to get become familiar with the motion. Those are probably the only two things I would adjust. Otherwise, this is a great little um, uh, controller here, especially with the mouse as well. Now, if we jump into sport mode, this is great if you have a vast amount of space and you wanna cover ground a lot quicker because it is double the speed. You wanna try and minimize your input with the motion controller to avoid jerky footage. Again, you can obviously correct this because within the goggles, you're gonna see that. But if, you have, if you're using Rocksteady, you're not gonna see all these jerky movements as much. Or if you have Rocksteady off and you use something like Gyroflow to correct your footage, to stabilize it, you're not gonna see that as much. But you wanna try and be as smooth as possible when flying. So sport mode is going to be more erratic because those thresholds for going forwards, backwards, uh, vertical and side to lateral speeds are a lot higher. You're going to notice more jerky movements. Just notice that if you are flying low in a big open space, just be wary that trees and power lines will come up very quickly. And if you don't see it, you're going to hit something. But that is the nature of FPV. So just be aware that if you are flying to try and release this trigger a bit, which brings on to another point with the variable speeds on both, well, normal and sport mode. I don't think this is good enough in terms of variable speeds. Like every time I let go slightly, there is a noticeable difference in slowdown and it's not as smooth as I would like. I hope DJI can bring a firmware update to fix this because clearly there's enough, there is enough room here for it to be variable. The minute you start put, let going the controller stick forward, the drone just slows down dramatically and it's not as smooth as I would like. And if you are gonna start adjusting the speeds, do it incrementally. Don't just jump to the highest speed because you wanna go max. Find that speed that you're comfortable with and then you'll be good. I also wouldn't worry too much about adjusting the reverse speed. The best advice I can give you here is fly the way you're facing. Unless you're doing something really specific with the drone and you're using it on a film production set, and you need to fly backwards so you don't reverse the footage and it looks like people are walking backwards, just make sure you have a spotter, make sure you know that when you are flying backwards at a really fast speed, you're not gonna hit anything. But that will be the only scenario I think you would ever use the reverse function, especially if you're a beginner because you can't see backwards. Now, when you are ready to make the jump to fly manual mode here, again, I'm gonna stress this every single time, make sure you get a simulator like DRL, that's the one I learned on and it's the one I'm gonna recommend because their training is so thorough from taking you from nothing to being able to fly FPV. As you see, that I'm an example in itself and I practice on the PS2 controller, which isn't the best remote to do it on, but I was able to do it anyway. But when you do jump into manual mode, again, find the open space with no people and then make sure altitude limit is on so the drone isn't gonna go upside down and dis make you disorientated, just so you can get familiarize yourself with the way the drone flies. And then just remember to have your finger on the pause trigger here 
just in case you get yourself into a pickle, you'll be able to save yourself and regain control of the drone and also not to break your drone. And all I say here is just keep practicing, practicing pitching forward to go forward and increasing throw, practice slowing down as well. That's something very important. You must be able to slow down when you're flying in manual mode. And that's simply by pitching back and applying throttle to have the, slow dr have the drone slow down. But at the same time, you need to balance those out together to not only slow down, but also correct the drone to be able to hover in place. Practice going side to side until you get familiar, then you can up toggle off altitude limit to be able to do your first flip and roll. And it's just so much fun when you're on manual mode. And that's when you can start calling yourself an FPV pilot, but you have full control of the drone. With this, this is nice, but I just don't think you get have the full control of the drone. It's just the nice Sunday drive. Whereas this, you can have a nice Sunday drive, but you can then, if you want to floor it and you want to do something crazy like dive a tower, it's going to be so much fun and you won't get that experience with this. Now, one thing I noticed as well when I was flying the drone is that the connection was pretty consistent at 60 megabits per second. Now, I do have this set to auto. Like I said, I'm doing drone testing, just familiarizing my, myself with the drone, not going too crazy. The connection was solid and very rarely did it drop to 26 megabits per second, which is actually really good still. When I was near a metal object or when I was just behind the building or just, just about to come over the crest, but then again, I didn't really notice a drop there. So it's very good to know that you can have so much confidence in this drone and you're not gonna lose a connection. Maybe when you're outside of the city, you're going further distances, it will be different, but this is something I'm gonna to have to test in the future. To be able to have manual mode on the joystick as well, I don't think you're gonna have max control. If you think of it as a fighter pilot, when you bank left or right, if it could continue to roll and it felt more like a plane, that would be interesting to see, but I think that would also take away from DJI trying to upsell you with this and rather than just you sticking with this. But again, you're gonna have a much better flying experience with this compared to this. Now next week we will cover video settings. This is something I think we need to cover sooner rather than later. So the different field of views, etc., and then whether we use auto or manual. However, if there's anything you wanna learn about the DJI Avada 2, let me know in the comment section down below. Subscribe for more videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. But before we go, the beginning of the video I said, I kept on asking myself this question. Is this the best hybrid FPV drone?